Have you ever wondered if it's worth getting a professional certification to get ahead in the world of geospatial and, or the world of data? Well, in this video, I want to talk with you about my personal experience and the decisions that I've made in terms of mapping my career and mapping my future regarding professional certifications and technical software certifications. Hi, if we haven't met before, my name is Juliana McMillan Wilhoyt and I run Tabulate Spatial Services. We are cartographers of change for both people and organizations. What that means is that I do data analysis and training for mission-driven organizations, and I also do career coaching for people in the GIS and data industry who have questions about their career and are looking to chart a path forward. So I, in this video, I'm going to be talking through uh, my personal experience with professional certifications as well as technical certifications. So this is my personal experience, um, but as I've made career choices, for me, it's been really helpful to listen to the stories of other people and understand why they made particular decisions. But the question that I get asked the most often is about, hey, like, should I get a technical certification? Should I get my GISP? Is it worth it for me? And at the end of the day, it really comes down to you and it really depends on your particular circumstances. So there's not going to be one size fits all solution, but I want to walk you through a few different ways to think about it. So the first thing that we need to do though, is we need to start by defining our terms. So the first term I want to define is professional certification. So professional certification is something like the project management professional, uh, the PMP, the AICP, the American Institute of Certified Planners, or the GISP, which is the GIS, the GIS professional. So those are professional certifications which come from an accrediting body and they are something that sort of says like, you are a professional in this field. They oftentimes have a certain amount of education required, um, work experience, um, and those certifications tend to say, hey, I am a professional in this field and I, you know, agree to, you know, certain ethical standards and other things. I do not have a professional certification. I was studying and planning to sit for my GISP in May of 2020, but um, the testing center ended up not being open and I was going to have to drive six hours each way to take my GISP and I determined that it wasn't worth it for me. And I didn't want to then uh, study again and have testing centers be closed. So I have not um, study, start, started restudying to, ta to take the GISP. Um, but again, those are, you know, there's this sort of independent accrediting body and it's something that's very much tied to you are an individual who works in this field and that you, you know, it, it, it's sort of situating you within the particularities of that professional field. Um, you know, it doesn't say anything about your ability to use a particular piece of software. So, um, for example, with the GISP on the exam, at least from what I understand for studying from it, you know, there's questions about coordinate systems. There's questions about, you know, um, geodesy, uh, datums, right? So it's saying that you have a base level of knowledge of, of the sort of this, the geospatial world as a whole, but it doesn't necessarily say like, you can be a good surveyor, you can be a good you know drone imagery analyst. It, do it doesn't say anything about that. Um, um, but you know, it's something to consider, especially people who ask me these questions who are early career, is you need to have particular you know educational requirements and other things to actually um, get your GISP. Whereas uh, another option for you are technical certifications. So a technical certification uh, is something that's put out by a software company and it says, hey, you know how to use this software. Uh, you have passed an exam on how to use uh, Esri ArcGIS um, desktop, ArcGIS server. Um, it, it's, it's very much specific to a type of software. And one thing that I actually really like about technical certifications is that there oftentimes are multiple levels so that, you know, you might have, a, a, hey, like I have a basic level of understanding, I have a media level of understanding, or I have an expert level of understanding. And those certifications, right, very much say like, you know, I, I have an Esri desktop associate, which is sort of the, the middle level. And so that at least says... I have verified that I have a middle level of knowledge within the Esri ArcGIS desktop ecosystem. And so that doesn't mean say anything about my ability to use QGIS. It doesn't say anything about my ability to use other software. It just says she has passed a test. 
on how to do some basic stuff in the ArcGIS ecosystem. So, right, whichever certification exam you want to go after really depends in part on some of your career goals. So I'm just going to quickly tell you a quick little bit about my career story. So I am actually pretty much fully self-taught within the world of geospatial. I have the equivalent of one semester of GIS that I took when I was in undergrad and fell in love with it. It was taught over the two semesters, but it was four credit hours, which was a one semester class. And I fell in love with GIS, ended up doing independent research, did an internship, uh, landed a job at Esri. And while I was at Esri, I was encouraged to sit for the desktop associate exam. Now, in part because I had that background at Esri, people just assumed that I did actually know GIS. But as I went to grad school and as I interviewed for jobs post grad school, it was really helpful for me to be able to say, hey, I worked at Esri, but you can see I have some level of knowledge um, of, the, of the software as demonstrated through my desktop associate uh, exam. So um, that's, you know, just a little bit about my story. But let's talk a little bit about why you might want to get uh, certification. So the first thing is that learning can be really fun and you can learn new things throughout the process. So this week, I actually went through the process of studying and taking and passing the Alteryx uh, basic level exam. And Alteryx is a data processing ETL tool that I use day in and day out. And I found that uh, studying for the exam and then taking the exam, I learned a lot of new things and I'm actually going to be a better analyst and better at my job because I studied for the exam. When I was studying for the GISP, it was really fun to get back in, study, learn new things, ask myself questions. And so um, that can be a really great way for you to push yourself, to push your mind. And that at least I found that I'm not gonna apply everything that I learn uh, while studying for an exam, but I can apply a lot of the things that I learn um, to my work and to make me better in what I'm doing. So that is one really great reason why you might want to, um, why you might wanna study and take one of these exams. Um, another thing is that there can be requirements uh, within a job for you to have a certification. So at least in the US, for the US federal government, for many times, if you want to get to the GS-12 level, which is a moderate, you know, sort of a higher level position, um, but not super high up, um, they require you to have a professional certification. So that would be something like the AICP, the GISP, or the PMP. Not a requirement across the board, but oftentimes that is a requirement. And so having a professional certification can then help set you up for success within certain sectors of work. Um, there's also, I, could, I would say, a little bit of um, inbreeding that can happen where people who have a certification can then really value other people having that certification. And so then they will value that you have it. It does demonstrate that you do have a commitment to the profession. With the GISP, you have to have presented at conferences, done volunteer hours. You, you have to have shown that you, you are contributing to the profession. So some people really do value that. Um, but just to keep in mind that it can be a requirement depending again on what career path you're going down. And the third reason why I think you might want to get a certification is that it could validate your career path. So this is exactly what happened with me. I have a non-traditional career path, right? I have very, very little in-person, in-classroom GIS training and experience. And having that Esri Desktop Associate, which is their middle level of, um, of certification, was a way that I could validate and demonstrate to people that I did actually know what I was doing. So if you are like me and you are self-taught, if you have sort of fallen into the world of GIS, maybe you're in a role where it was you know sort of adjacent and you've done a lot more geospatial, getting, uh, getting one of these technical certifications could be really helpful for you to be able to demonstrate to an employer, hey, I actually know what I am doing. I think it's really great if you have a passion project or something else that you can demonstrate along with that, but um, having that technical certification can indeed be super, super helpful. And then the final thing that I want to say is that certifications really need context. So what I mean by that is that I oftentimes see people posting on LinkedIn or other places saying, hey, I just got certified by Esri. I'm a Esri blah, blah, blah. There's no context to what that means. Um, 
they, they just sort of say that they did it. I don't know, right? If I'm sort of, sort of an outsider and not in the club, I don't know what that means. I also don't know why they did it. Um, so I want to just share quickly how I don't do this anymore, but when I was earlier in my career, how I would talk about my certification. So uh, I, I would say something like, I have a deep knowledge of the core of the ArcGIS for desktop environment. This is demonstrated by my work on projects like X, Y, and Z, but also by the fact that I passed a rigorous exam called the Esri Desktop Associate Exam, which I passed with flying colors. That is an exam in which I had to demonstrate my ability to do basic tasks and knowledge of the software. Right, something like that, where you are contextualizing what this certification actually means. Um, it's really important to actually tie that back to what I call your personal value proposition or your personal thesis statement, which is the way that you are showing up in the world and the ways in which you are actually talking about your work, right? You don't wanna just like put something out there. You need to contextualize it, make it clear. Like, why does this make you an awesome job applicant? Why does this make you better than a competitor that you have this certification? How does this help validate the particularities of the experiences that you've had? So anyway, I hope that this video has been really useful for you as you think through some of those questions of, is a certification worthwhile for me? It's important again to remember that there is a huge difference between that technical certification, like an Esri, Tableau, Alteryx certification, and something like a professional certification, your GISP, AICP, et cetera. I hope that you will keep watching these videos. It mean a lot to me if you like this video and if you subscribed to get notified of when I put out new videos. I also love it if you have a question that you would like answered in an upcoming video, please let me know in the comments below. I read each comment and I'm really thankful for them. So thank you so much for watching and I hope that this helps you in mapping your future.